So Shane, why show this story? If it is depressing, why spend five years plus of your life delving into it? I understand, you know, that that judgment of some people that are designated as, you know, sort of the pundits able to talk about it and not be judged, whereas those that are artists are more, you know, trashed or, or, or brought down in some way branded as evil because they want to show light about something. But what was it about this story that you felt you needed to explore and spend so much time and energy and money and resources on? Um, I guess to just jump into it, basically when I saw the picture of Alyssa, the most famous one, uh, it was her like, you know, just uh, kind of making this claw, you know, like she had all this, you know, weird bad makeup on, but she was making like this, you know, claw figure at the camera. Um, and on her arm she had a, uh, like 50 really bad self, like really just deep scarred self-inflicted wounds on her arm. And I don't know if you can see, but I have exactly just that. Um, so I basically felt like I was looking into a mirror suddenly. I was just like, holy shit. Um, I mean, mine aren't as visible anymore because they're a lot older than hers were probably, you know, new. Um, but I just was like, that's, I mean, there were, I, they were so identical. It was just like, you know what I mean? It was just like, that's exactly what my arm looks like and that's kind of trippy and being a self abuser i already know that that i can't understand or even picture or fathom somebody who self abuses killing somebody else it didn't make sense to me um if anything she would have killed herself which she already tried to do um and so i kind of felt i guess i felt like i was looking into a mirror in a way and uh i do know at one point right before i started self abusing when i was 13 I had thought of killing kids at my school because I was bullied, bullied so bad. And um, I literally had, when I was in eighth grade, I literally had uh, not a single friend, like not even the dorks would be my friend. And, um, you know, and because uh, it, uh, it was predominantly a Hispanic school, so I got picked on for being white. Um, you know, I wasn't allowed to use the bathroom. I would get, like, people put gum in my hair and they'd have to cut my hair out, you know, to get the gum out and, um, you know, just smack me over the head with weapons, you know, just for like no reason whatsoever other than walking, you know, or trying to use the bathroom. And um, anyways, it, it was so bad. I was terrified to go to school. And so I actually mapped out how I was going to kill everybody at my school. But then I was like, I don't have guns. So I was like, okay, so I armed myself with kitchen knives because um, that's the only weapon I could get. And um, but then well, actually just so many things. It's kind of hard to pinpoint one. I ended up seeing blood all over the walls one day at school like this like it went on for like maybe 15 20 feet just blood on the walls and it was one of the guys who I wanted to fuck up and uh, he was a big guy and uh, somebody still I don't know who beat his ass but somebody beat him up really bad this big guy who I couldn't stand who would pick on me and uh, it was a bunch of people picked on me but he was one of them and uh, it actually it not only frightened me seeing his blood, it made me sad. And I think that's when I realized I could never hurt somebody else. Um, and I could never, especially with a knife, so that kind of raises, I guess, maybe the gun control issue. If I had a gun, maybe it would be a lot easier to just point and shoot, but there's no way I could have walked up to somebody and stabbed them. I mean, I feel bad if I have to kill a fly. I'd rather just go away, you know? And so um, that's when I decided I couldn't ever hurt anybody, and then I started self-abusing. And I thought that that would maybe make people afraid of me because um, I started by like grinding my hands into the walls till I had no skin on my knuckles So I thought maybe they would think I beat somebody up or that's kind of how it started You know the, the 13 year old my 13 year old mentality and then it started leading into other stuff And then I didn't even end up actually cutting till I was 26 So it was like 13 years later when it turned into I guess direct you know uh, How would you say it? I, you know, I mean like it was always other forms of self-abuse. It wasn't the cutting thing um I totally forgot the question because I told you I do I go all around oh. in circles, but it was uh, oh, okay. what made me want yeah, to. Um, so you saw yeah. this picture and you saw her arm and, and there was something in her. I saw myself in her. Me. That's what it was. <laughs> um, and uh, I guess it was a need to understand that or, or could I kill somebody? Like since I'm looking in a mirror, could I have killed somebody or why did she do it? There's just all these things going through my head. Uh, it was a need to understand it. Um, it was outraged by just the media in general, but mainly her. I just, I was so sickened by that lady. It just, and I know she does it for show and who, 
who knows maybe she's even a nice person but but still she's selling out if she is i mean that's just awful what she does i think and um so that combined with you know making me think about calm mind why i start i think a lot of things were going on she reminded me of the calm mind thing and that's what actually made me stop watching television and uh yet you know i'm a filmmaker but i stopped watching you know television which is like a huge i think part of the industry um and so i just had so many things floating through my head you know i i guess i was angry at the media that was another thing too is <laughs> there's so many things a few months earlier i tried to make a movie about human trafficking and uh, that was an issue I'd been, um, it was in 2009, I, I, I attempted to make a, start, started to get together an idea for human trafficking and I'd been wanting to do it since 2005 when I first had heard about like sex trafficking. And um, so it would have been about you know, sex trafficking in particular. And uh, I'd been spending months trying to figure out the story I could make. And then this girl ended up in the news, JC Degard, who most people have probably heard about if they've, you know, ever wanted to make a movie about human trafficking, might have heard about this girl. She lived for 18 years as a slave to this guy and had kids, and then she ended up being found. Um, you know, they had thought she was dead for almost two decades, and then they found her, and she was like, in 2009, she was like the most famous, I guess, person in the world as far as non-celebrity, I would say. I mean, she was just everywhere. And so when I heard the story, I was like, oh, I want to make a movie like that. And I announced it, <laughs> thinking, you know, nobody's gonna, you know, I announced it to like a couple indie horror sites thinking nobody's gonna read this. I just can use this to maybe get a few actors I want, you know? And I said I got the idea from the JC Degard thing. And because I made a movie called Amateur Porn Star Killer, next thing I know is posting a pornographer making JC Degard porno. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, seriously? <laughs> And, um, and then for about 48 hours, I became the most hated man in the world. I mean, my uh, friends were like, hey, you're on the news in Ireland, you're on the news in Korea, the Korean newspapers are writing about you, uh, you know, uh, England, you're, you're all over England, you're on the front page of the globe, tabloids. I'm like, I had no idea the world worked this way, like the media. Um, like, you know, like I said, in 1999, I stopped watching the news or television because of Columbine, but then in 2009, now a decade later, I almost killed myself over that. I mean, because it, it like it caused problems within my family. Because I mean, everybody, my dad was calling me up. You know, you know, you're on the radio getting thrashed right now. I mean, oh god, that that experience was just awful. And I was sincerely, I mean, I was trying to make this film. I thought it was important, and I just said, you know, hey, I got the idea from this story, so I want to make basically her story. But I was going to change all the names and all this stuff, and I just wanted to see what the Stockholm Syndrome, I was gonna explore the Stockholm Syndrome, you know, and I thought that was really interesting and that was always kind of something that I think I explored uh, subconsciously, you know, throughout, you know, other, you know, some of my other films. And, um, and then all of a sudden, no, everyone in the world decided to hate me. And, uh, and uh, I, I wasn't used to uh, being thrashed. Like, you know, I interviewed me and that guy was a nightmare, just completely, I had no idea, I didn't listen to this stuff. And th that guy just, um, I was like one of the worst experiences of my life talking to that guy, you know, I just like almost like wanted to die after talking to him, you know, and none of these people, they, the whole thing, none of these people gave a fuck, you know, and that's what happened. So I dropped the movie, um, it ruined my relationship, I mean, it ruined so many things for me, and then literally it was like that same time, it was like only a couple of weeks before, like Alyssa, you know, had been all over the news, so this was all happening at the same time, I was all over the news, for you know, trying to make this human trafficking thing and then she was all over the news. And ma maybe that was it too. Maybe I saw all these accusations. Just, people don't wanna wait for anything. Like they hear, oh, so-and-so uh, just got you know, raped by, uh, or, or you know, five girls just got raped. Um, they have a suspect, his name is so-and-so. Oh wait, it's not him, little retraction. And then that guy's life is ruined. I mean, they don't give one damn about ruining, the media doesn't care about ruining anybody's life. You know, they ruin lives. In my opinion, the media ruins lives left and right. They don't care. They just want headlines. They just want a story. And um, I think that was one thing that made me want to jump on it because I already felt like my life was ruined. I, didn't, I mean, my life literally felt ruined at that point. And I feel like I've been picking myself up ever since. Now I feel finally back to being me, which is funny because now that the movie's coming out, I'm like, oh, shit, you know, maybe now something else is going to happen. But I think that that was a big thing is I felt like I had nothing to lose. I felt like I had nothing to lose at that point. Everything's screwed, you know, right now for me. Um, 
why don't I just go tackle this subject on this? I can't make a story about a victim. Why don't I make a story about a murderer who I almost think might be a victim because I at least think she's a victim of the media. So maybe that's it. If that answers the question, because, and then the thing with making it, then I started thinking she actually didn't do it. So that's a whole other story. And now I'm actually almost convinced she didn't even do the murder. And that actually made me think about my childhood, which was completely ruined by false accusations and the court and the system and all this stuff. So yeah, maybe that answers the question. I felt like I had nothing to lose. I saw a lot of myself. I wanted to challenge the media. Um, it was it was the man with nothing to lose, I guess, is maybe the... Yeah.